<laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, here we go. So this section is the atrial arrhythmias. This is actually very important to understand because one of them uh, involves well, atrial, you have atrial fibrillation, you have the ectopics, and the reentry, um, the reentry, um, uh, fun, like the reentry uh, method, involves with what we talked yesterday about the Wolf Parkinson's uh, syndrome. Okay, mm -hmm. here we go. All right, so the alter automaticity, so. There's actually normal automaticity. So that just means there's an automatic and it's normal, right? And they involve it at the SA node. That's where it initiates and it, and it uh, causes the propagation of the action potential. Now, here's important to understand um, the function of these SA node pacemaker cells. So here is a, here's a, uh, this is important, like the overdrive suppression definition, which involves uh, that it says that any particular cell is less likely to depolarize, meaning to cause an action potential, if it has been depolarized already by an external source. So what that is saying is that there's going to be the refractory period that is going to uh, impede for another electrical activity to occur. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, automaticity suppressed in other pacemaker regions by the action potential that the SA node generates from the SA node itself arriving before the threshold reach. So, in other words, refractory period is impeding for another action potential to occur. All right. So, when do we see an alter automaticity? Like, for example, what can increase the speed? Or the frequency of the of the action potential. Well, exercise, for example, right? Um, the ANS, the hormones, hormones, drugs like caffeine, they all are going to cause an extra beat to occur. Okay, they're going to increase the rate. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, this only occurs in the pacemaker cells. The pacemaker cells are the only ones responsible to increase that frequency. Okay, what about what about okay, so so the the ANS will increase it. What about a loss of the PNS? Um we, we a loss of PN remember we talked about this how um when when somebody's breathing, there is this alter um, this change in the heart rate because when you inspire, you depress the vagus nerve, and then you see the p exactly what you said, the PNS gets suppressed, and so you see a little bit of an increase in heart rate. Right. So you're not gonna get a full PNS suppression because then you're gonna, you're just gonna have no vagus nerve activity. Does that make sense? <clears throat> yeah, because I read somewhere that that if you like during a heart transplant, that yeah. once the heart not connected to a body gets disconnected from the vagus nerve, right. that it'll start beating faster. Right. And that makes sense, right? Yes. Exactly. All right. So in this case, there's a we still see all it's an also an alteration because it's not normal. Uh, but we see now this abnormal. So we'll see what this means. So it says that there's a disturbance in the ionic currents such that spontaneous firings of cells that are normally capable, not capable of automaticity <coughs> occurs. In other words, because you're not talk because you're not using the pacemaker cells, they do not have that function. And therefore they do not have that overdrive suppression. Okay? okay. So there is um, there is, because the, the cells are not functioning, you're going to have an increased resting member potential in those cells. And they can occur in cases of ischemia, infarction, hypocalcemia, uh, hypokalemia, cardiomyopathy, 
that they all can lead to in spontaneous depolarization. All right. Mm -hmm. So again, a region that is not normally supposed to pace will pace. So that's what is a little bit odd. Okay. Okay. And there's a loss of the um, flow pretty much that starts from the SE known, AB known, and a uh, bundle of his and Purkinje fibers. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here we have what is called triggered activity, um, which are called after depolarizations. Okay. When you hear after depolarization, if you talk about the PQRST in the ECG, where exactly do you think they're talking about if it's after depolarization? I don't understand the question. So after depolarization means it's going to get depolarized after something, correct? Uh huh. So if you have a trigger on the SA node, then you get a P, then you get your Q, then you get your R, your S, and then the T. And then you go back into the isoelectrical uh, line, right, uh -huh. of the ECG. At what point can you get an after depolarization? Hmm. I'm not sure. So after means later. Depolarized means after it has been depolarized. So P is the initiation. Then you get the QRS, and then you get the T. So the ventricle gets depolarized in the QRS. And so the only pro prob the only uh, the only portion that it can get depolarized after it's at the T, which is the repolarization phase, right? Okay. Okay. So you, you will see it on the ECG that we'll talk about it. Okay. Okay. So here it is. After polarization, there's actually two types. And because they be occur um, unexpectedly, they can increase uh, the, the heart rate and therefore they cause tachycardia. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, so early hyper after depolarization are the uh, what we just talked about that occurs during repolarization. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So, and they're a lot most likely to occur in the long QT and when there's bradycardia and things like that. And they can cause torsade the point, which is very important type of ventricular fibrillation. Okay. Very characteristic. Um, there's also delayed after depolarization. And so this will occur, this will occur after a full repolarization. So after a T wave, because it's delayed, but still a little early it would cause um, um, a trigger for an action potential to occur. So here are the examples. Here's the early after depolarization where you see that the normal action potential and occurs during the repolarization phase. Okay. All right. To be honest, oh, here, action potential. That's at the It's not rate. fully, it's right at the tip and then it will start again. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. So the delayed after the procession, it's seen often with caffeine. And what's the reason behind it? The reason behind it is because the cal there's a calcium release from the, um, uh, what, what, what was the name of this? Seroplastic reticulum? Um, Cero DSR? Yeah, reticulum. Um, yeah, it's the... Um... Something S. What was the S for? Yeah, what is the S for? Let me quickly look it up. Wow, this is so bad. Um, reticulum. Yeah, seroplasmic reticulum. I got it right. Sarcoplasmic. Sarcoplasmic. Sarcoplasmic, yes. Sarcoplasmic. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, where the calcium is being stored. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so again, this is just concepts that we need to understand, okay? We'll see where they come in place, in play. Um, okay, so here we see that we're gonna talk about re-entry and there are three types of re-entry, an anatomical, a functional, and an anisotropic. 
meaning that it's not in a uniform manner. Okay. Oops. Okay. All right. Um, so what are the so the reentry? Me, uh, it's called. Are the waves of the excitation that turns back and reexcite a previous activated tissue? Does that make sense? Uh huh. Pretty self-explained. So, what are the conditions? It says that they are they require unidirectional conduction block, so it cannot go backwards. So, a route to go around. Here we see a round circle, and an excitable tissue at the center. So, if there is an myocardial infarction that is there is that tissue in the middle like this black portion here mm -hmm. then that creates loop okay and, and an excitable tissue ahead of the traveling impulse so in other words if this is not excited yet but this is it will cause like this boom and then another one and another one and it will be ongoing all right does that make sense mm -hmm. So here, if all the conditions are met, then you get this re entrant impulse that would keep propagating without colliding into an already existing impulse. All right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So remember, isotropic means uniform manner. So anisotropic means not in uniform. Okay? So here's the Wolf Parkinson syndrome. We're just, this is barely touching. It's just telling you that an anatomic reentry is what you get in Wolf Parkinson's White Syndrome. All right. So here's what, here's a type of situation you might get an anatomic reentry. So it says around a scar followed a heart attack. Okay. Wait, around a scar? Yeah. So here's an example you have an SA node. Let me draw it. You have an SA node right here. You have the AV node, correct? Mm -hmm. And in the middle, you have what? Um, What's this thing in the middle. What's this? The septum. Yes. And so there is this portion right here that I drew with a lot of lines, dark lines. That's the if you want to think about the the part of the portion that has a scar in the heart okay and so what are you forming a circle around a scar okay so basically you're making so basically you're making like a circuit like an electrical circuit exactly but in this case it's an anatomic re-entry meaning see that that's an accessory pathway right there something is allowing it to go back all right. So anatomically, there's something wrong. All right. Okay. So and uh, you might get that in Wolf Parkinson's syndrome. Anulose fibrosis is another type. Um, so and this is the key thing. Nothing stops it from going around. To go up and around and continue with an with uh, electrical activity that was not initiated in the SA node. Right, and so that, basically it keeps on like, it keeps on propagating. Do you see that? Yeah, exactly. It yeah. keeps on going. Exactly. Then you get functional reentry. Uh, it says that it's the same, but there's no structural impairment. The conduction itself is impaired. Um, I also seen with ischemia, there is conduction disturbance that says that it's right here. Um, so the electricity is not conducted appropriately. I don't remember much about this, but I think it's just that there's not the right motion of the, or the flow of the electricity. I think that's what's happening here. And then there is circle, circus movement reentry. Oh, sorry. So. This whole thing is called circus movement reentry. And the two things that are needed for that is a conduction velocity and the refractory period. One of those have to be altered. All right. So normally that doesn't occur because on a healthy tissue, the conduction velocity is too rapid. So it's too fast to 
it's not too slow, like in functional reentry. It's not too slow that it will allow the refractory period to occur and then it will cause the reentry. That doesn't happen in a healthy tissue because the conduction velocity is too rapid and the refractory period is too long, therefore inhibiting for another action potential to occur. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So here it says cardiac disease are commonly associated with slowing of the conduction or there's an alteration of the refractory period. Normally, it's, you will see it shorter in those cases. And that would induce a reentry arrhythmia. Okay? Mm -hmm. So in other words, here's what I wrote. You need to be at the right place and at the right time. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's very, very specific. All right. So, and the last one is anisotropic reentry. And we talk about this not being in uniform fashion. So, and here I wrote down a slowing of conduction is in the path itself. So, Here's, here's the key thing. There's a different conduction velocity along the length of this of a circuit, okay? So in some parts, it's going to be slowed and the others is going to be fast. So here you see that is a little bit lighter yeah. and that, in, that suggests that there's a slowing of the conduction in that pathway. What, what's just, that due yeah. to? Is that just due to tissue quality or? So when there's um it, it could be because it had been it had been damaged for example in ventricular fibrillation so i, I want to say it has been damaged like right. for example a myocardial infarction could have caused it and that induces the ventricular fibrillation sorry does that make sense yeah so yeah it will most likely be due to damage which all right like yeah. damage specifically scarring right 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 remember we went back here and where was it where was it there are different types of damages that you can get pretty much one can be anatomical meaning the scar so here's what it requires a re-entry unit duration conduction block and an excitable tissue in the center, an excitable tissue ahead of the traveling impulse. So what I'm thinking is happening in anisotropic is that a specific portion of the loop, it's also altered. That is not allowing it to, um, to propagate efficiently around the loop. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So those are the mechanisms of arrhythmia. Now you know why they happen. And now we'll see the different types where they can get manifested. Okay. Okay. So this is actually a, a bit important and it's easy to see. An atrial ectopic. What does ectopic mean? Uh, not in the correct spot. Exactly. It's, ab it's abnormal, unexpected, right? Uh -huh. So you can get a premature atrial contraction, also known as PAC that arises in an atopic focus so not at the not at the not at the um s s a n exactly as a node yes not at the s a node so some other place in the atria begins okay, okay? so I just want you to start thinking a little bit. In the ECG, where will this be manifested? Um, near the P wave or before the P wave, maybe? At the P wave, exactly. Exactly. So, look, it tells you right here, you're going to get a different morphology. You're going to get a different morphology. Where? At the P wave. It occurs earlier than, oh, shit, sorry. Occurs earlier than anticipated. And... These are characteristics of the premature atrial contraction. And you're going to get a, a pause that is followed. Okay? Okay. So I wrote it here. The features of atrial ectopic, a pause, 
depolarization of atria by unusual source would overdrive suppress the AV node, the SA node. What does that mean? That means that the heart recognized that there's an electroactivity, and so it would suppress the SA node from doing its normal um, action potential. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So where can we, why can this occur? Well, this can occur due to delayed after depolarization. And we talked about that. Caffeine can cause it. Nicotine can cause it. Anxiety can cause it. All right. Other pathological scenarios can also cause it. Fever as well because it's increasing the heart rate. And you can also, sometimes that is asymptomatic, you can get the skipped beat. They have an extra one. They have an extra... They have an extra one and they feel the pause. Like this can actually be, you can actually feel the skip beat pretty much. All right. So here we have a scenario where it's, oh, my screen froze. This is atrial ectopy? Yeah, atrial ectopy. Here, the SA node is normally, well, let me, where's my pen? The SA node is normally here we see an ectopic beat occurring from this left atria, all right? Mm -hmm. And they show us here the ECG. This is normal, and this is also normal. Do you see this one? It's yeah. very, very uh, recognizable and how the P wave has a different morphology, correct? Yeah. If you take a look at the length of each beat, especially this one and this one and this one, they're all the same. Same length. Correct? Right. Then you see a shorter one. Do you see that? Yes. And right after that, there's a pause. This is the pause. So it's followed by a pause. Okay. Okay. You okay? You with me so far? Yes. All right. So, do we meet the criteria? Different morphology. Yes. What else? Um, a pause. Followed by a pause, and there's one more. Too early. Too okay. early, because it happened right at the P wave. Okay. Mm -hmm. at the same time as the SA node, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And now, and now, will you only get one, and then, and then it will continue to be normal, or do you get a lot of them, or what? Check example, example number two. Okay. So early followed by a pause. There's the pause. Here, hang on. Here, we have a normal, oh. normal P wave. Uh-huh. Mm, this is our P wave. It's a bit messed up, but this is still our P wave. Uh huh. And then we have this inside the T wave. Do you see that? Uh huh. So too early. Too exactly. Early, followed by a pause. Where's the pause? Here's the pause. See how the T wave here, here. You have a T wave here, and then here, see how long the pause is? Mm hmm. So that is the pause, All right? The isoelectric line is longer, all right? And okay. check it out. Now will it, now, will it always will it always come in from the left atrium or can it come from different places in the right atrium? What do you think? I think it can come from different places in the right atrium. I mean- Exactly, I think, exactly. I think in any atrium. Anywhere but the SE node is an ectopic beat. Correct? Yes. Exactly. So it could find it could come from anywhere. So here we see the same thing. Look at it. This is very the second one is more obvious. You have a T wave, you have your P. You have your T wave, you have your P. T with P. Did you see that? Mm hmm There's no P here. It's inside. All right? Mm hmm And it's followed by the long pause. All right. Mm -hmm. Good. This is good. Atrial topic. 
it's good again Another one of those things that if somebody asks you, do you see anything abnormal? You can say there's an ectopic beat followed by a by a long pause. If you want to talk about the characteristics, right? Mm -hmm. Look at this one. Look at that. Do you see that abnormal P? Yeah, it's like it. Yeah, it's too early. It comes in. Real and you see exactly. And, and you see the look at the long pause. This one's way more characteristic. That's long compared to this one. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, this one's nice. And this is normal. This is normal. And that's normal. But you see that this one's longer, right? Um, is it easy to see? Yes, yes, of course. Okay, good, good, good. All right, so let's see if there's anything... So the reason why that happens is because there's the overdrive suppression. The region of the heart is depolarized from an external source that it resets the, the resting memory potential to move negative. So less likely to depolarize. That's why you get the long pause. Okay. So, the, so now let's start talking about describing a type of ECG. And if they talk about a regular ECG or irregular ECG. So this is actually a little bit annoying because it's actually this is this type of ECG, it's called a regularly irregular. Okay. Because everything else is regular, but one thing, which is the ectopic beat. Okay. And and look, if you look closely at this slide, you see that there's an every third bead, there's an atrial ectopic. You want to count with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's one. Mm -hmm. And then you have one, one. Where is it? You have one bead, two bead, three bead, boom, another yeah. one. Right. Do you see that? Yeah. So this is called regularly because it is regular, mm -hmm. but it's irregular as in it's altering the normal sinus rhythm. Right. It follows a pattern. Easy? Yep. Okay, good. Good. Um, Let's see what we have here. Here it says the same thing. Uh, it also tells you to consider looking separately if it's an atrial heart rate or a ventricular heart rate. So meaning you're not going to get a P wave. You're just going to get a, a ventricular heart rate. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's how you know. That's how you know if if your SA nodes function or not. If there's no P wave. That the ventricular is doing its job. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. We talked. Uh, I think. Did we talk about this? A wandering pacemaker. Ah uh, no. No. Okay. So. Okay. Let me. I forgot what this was. Coming from different places. Hmm. Oh, okay. So this is what you were talking about before. Can it come from different places? Think about that simultaneously. Different ectopic beats from different places at the same time. <coughs> so for a wandering pacemaker, you require three different P wave morphologies. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So this is actually it's asymptomatic, so it doesn't cause any symptoms. And you can create, and you could see it in, and in, in people with increased vagal tone. Where do you see vagal tone increase? People who are athletes. Okay, and that gives you a question mark because it hasn't been proven yet. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, yeah. So, what do we see here? Let's take a look. Here, I uh, label it number one number two, and number 
they involve the P waves. Look at them. This is nice. It has a lot of space. The PR interval is lengthy. Here we have a short PR interval. And here we barely see the P wave. Wait, where are you pointing to that we barely see the P wave? Number three? Number three, right here. Okay. okay. Do you see it? That's yeah, the so P number, wave. <clears throat> so number one and number two are good, right? It's not that they're good, they're different. The P wave here is normal. The PR right. interval is nice and long. Right. Here we see a short PR interval. See how small okay. that is? Okay. Right yeah, here. yeah, 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 yeah. Right? And the last one, we barely see the P wave. It's almost inside the QRS. Right. So, again, characteristics of a wandering pacemaker, more than three distinct P wave morphologies. QRS and T waves are usually normal, and the ventricular rate is usually less than 100 beats per minute. Okay, and here I showed it again. Same as the number two, same as number three. You see that? Uh huh. So, wandering pacemaker are usually asymptomatic, not a big deal. All right, so here is the involvement of digitalis, which, which we don't really want to get into too much. Atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation just means disorganized electrical activity, right? And we know we know the scenario, why it happens. There's different reentry waves occurring within the atria. They can be triggered by a natural topic causing the reentry to go and go and go and nothing stops it. Um, it could lead to a thrombus formation in the atria. Um, those are usually permanent and things like that, okay? Yeah, so atrial fibrillation basically just means that it's, um, how can I describe it? It's like, It almost like it's moving without purpose. It says right here. Disruption of the normal electrical rhythm that prevents from properly coordinating contraction of the muscles. Right. And you know the scenario. The P wave is different than tachycardia. Can you explain to me how it's different than the tachycardia? What's the difference between tachycardia and atrial fibrillation? Well, tachycardia is just a tachycardia is just a fast heartbeat. Atrial filler fibrillation is like no control. Is there heart? Is there fast heartbeat? Uh, yes, but it's like it's not. It's not like coordinated. It's not like a coordinated heartbeat. Exactly. Exactly. It's irregular. That's the word. Irregular yes. rhythm. Yes, it's regular. But so, even. But yeah. not just, but not just the chronicity of it, that's regular. It's also like the physical, like 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 the anatomical aspect of it is irregular. Right, right, right. right. That's what is causing the atrial fibrillation. Yes, yes. Um, and that's called in this case, we there's no regularity, and it's happening randomly. So in this case, it's called irregularly irregular rhythm. All right. Mm hmm. That's pretty much it. I see here that it says that there, there are no P waves. So there's a fast ventricular response. Suffer after being deployed in the fast rates. Let's take a look. The P wave, yeah, I don't see any P wave. Maybe one in the middle right here. <laughs> But there's erratic atrial activity that is like impeding to see the P wave. We just see the ventricular because it's going straight to the ventricles and causing the depolarization. Right. Um, here we see an example of a normal. Uh, you see the 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 C lines right here, the proper structure C lines of the myocardio. Here you see the S. 
that is the sarcoplasmic reticulum, sarcoplasmic reticulum. And here's a scenario where there's six after 16 weeks with atrial fibrillation, the difference between one and the other. Hmm. The remodeling, right? It's pretty much it's, you. You cannot tell that this is a uh, myocardial heart, right? That's and here, yeah. And here are the different causes. Aging can cause it. Babbler congenital heart disease. Wolf Parkinson's White syndrome can cause because there's an accessory pathway involved that breaches annulus fibrosis. We'll touch on that later. The next the next lecture. Um, so there are a lot of different causes, okay? Even cardiac surgery, because it can cause a scar, right? Hmm. So fibrillation occurs due to the re-entry that we talked about that initiated all of it, okay? Mm -hmm. So take a look at this one. This one's atrial flutter. How do you think this is different? You can read the notes, but how do you think this is different from an, from an AF, the atrial fibrillation? You know, I don't know. Regular atrial fibrillation is sustained by right atrial macro re-entrance circuit. So what, is mac what is macro, Mario? Big. Exactly. This is bigger. Think about a re-entry that is bigger. Mm. Here's here's the difference. Do you know what it says there? There is a pattern. There is a pattern. Do you see a pattern in atrial fibrillation? Oh, sorry, atrial flutter in this case? Yes. So two things. There's a pattern. And there's sawtooth appearance. Right. Let's see the other one. Is there a sawtooth appearance? No. And also, also, it's not it's not pattern like. Exactly. It's very there's no like you said it. There's no coordination. All right. Right. Okay. Awesome. So flutter. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, atrial flutter. Typical macro uh, re-entry loop. Um, what do we have next? Supraventricular tachycardias. So let me see what it says here. Supra means above the ventricles, tachycardia. So there are two types that can occur. The AV node, there's nothing. This, the DH is the problem. So anything that we just talked about, they're actually supraventricular tachycardias. Does that make sense? They're grouped like that. And what's characteristic about them? Right here, the P wave morphology, it's gonna be abnormal. <laughs> and here we have atrial tachycardias. So the difference here is that we're going to see abnormal P wave, obviously. And we're going to, let me see what we have here. Start and stop, number one. What's that noise, man? Oh, just the washing machine. Oh. So, in this case, we see that there is actually this whole part here is very um, regular, let's say. Which part? So this is just atrial tachycardia, and they have regular rhythm, 
this whole part right here. It's regular, right? Yes, there's regularity to it. But in this case, we're going to see this. The HO rate is going to be 150 beats per minute. Okay. There's going to be altered P wave morphology because we're dealing with the atria. And these are the type of causes that can lead to it, which we explained before. And in this case, we have a paroxysmal atrial tachycardia. Paroxysmal because it's, you know what paroxysmal meaning, right? Uh, remind me. It means that it's coming paroxysmal. It means um, it's coming unexpectedly. Okay. Okay. So I don't think we need to put that much detail into this, but I just want to show you that something triggers it and it causes the whole atrial fibrillation here. Oh, sorry, atrial tachycardia. And something pauses it at the end. So you go back to normal. Okay. So praxis just means for a couple of seconds, you're going to get some abnormality. Okay. Okay. So multifocal in this case, more than three P waves. So in other words, remember we talked about one in pacemaker that also involved three P waves or more. Mm -hmm. So that's what you get here. It's the same thing. Multifocal tachycardia. Wandering pacemaker is a type of multifocal tachycardia, atrial tachycardia. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, atrial tachycardia with a block. Okay, let's take a look at this. What they mean. Uh, atrial tachycardia does not equal increased ventricular rates. Delay due to block. Delay due to block is there. Let's see. All right, here we see, let's see, here's the QRS, there's the T, here we see an extra P wave. What's another name for an extra P wave? A name for an extra P wave? Yeah. Oh, paroxysmal? No, that means that you're going to get randomly uh, an increase in tachycardia, atrial tachycardia. Extra P wave that comes in a place different from the SA node. That's what a extra P wave is. Huh. Okay. Ectopic, right? Oh, ectopic. Yes. Okay. Oh, stupid. Yes. 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 All right. So then we see that there's two P waves that occur for each QRS complex. That means there's two P's for one QRS. That is not good. So in other words, so I mean the atrium is doing it twice because exactly. there's a block, so so the signal isn't transferring. Exactly, exactly. The atrial rhythm is regular because there's two for every QRS. The ventricular rhythm is regular. You see at the same length, same length, right? Right. And the block is constant. As in, you need two for one. Right? Mm -hmm. So in this case, it's well tolerated. Because there's no abnormality per se. Only every other P wave is making it through. Atrial tachycardia block. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. And just like that, we're done with atrial arrhythmias. Wow. That's really cool. Yeah. So the key important thing here is just know the re-entry. Ectopic, it would be worth knowing because they can they can show on people who drink coffee, man. Right? Where is it? Where is it? The re-entry, it's important. All right? This part right here. Just know that there's there's a scar forming in the middle. Where is it? Where are the requirements here? So you need direction conduction block, meaning going one way and around inexcitable tissue in the center, like in this case. Whoops. 
in this ah cannot circle it. And there's an excitable tissue ahead of the traveling impulse. So all of this can be excitable. So if you start here, you're going to go around and around and around. That's it. One more thing to know would be this. Where is it? The overdrive suppression. That is important. Okay? There is a suppression because it, had, it has been depolarized before that is disallowing a new action potential to occur before time. 